If the DraftKings employee used his position at the company and knowledge gained by working there to place a bet at a rival site, did he do anything illegal? Maggie, it's possible. It probably wouldn't be insider trading from a legal standpoint because a daily fantasy sports game likely doesn't count as a security for purposes of securities law. That area of law really is about stocks and bonds, those types of financial instruments. But there are other areas of law that could be implicated. There's potentially antitrust law, where are the two main daily fantasy sports companies conspiring in a way to not adequately police their own employees, and that could hurt consumers. There's the possibility of the Federal Trade Commission looking into deceptive or anti-competitive practices. And then there are, of course, plenty of states that have looked into this topic. Some have largely banned daily fantasy sports games. Others are looking into it. And there are consumer protection laws, deceptive practices. All of those could enter the story, and they all have to be somewhat of a concern to these two major companies, FanDuel and DraftKings. Andrew, you can't turn on the TV or go on a website without seeing an advertisement for FanDuel or DraftKings. They have business relationships with professional leagues, with their players association, with our site, SI.com. How could a story like this affect those business relationships moving forward? Well, I mean, it's certainly not a good look, right? Uh, you know, the leagues are looking at this news and saying, all right, get your house in order, guys. Come on, seriously. Because otherwise, they love this stuff, right? It, it, you have uh, fans that are more engaged than ever with the sports in question. Uh, uh, there's definitely definitely a lot of support for it I you know so no change you don't believe that this will affect FanDuel and DraftKings specifically dealing with businesses in the future I think they're gonna put a little bit of private pressure like guys come on get it get it together but I don't think we're gonna hear anything publicly very interesting uh, Michael lawmakers are looking into daily fantasy you alluded to this and whether or not this is just sports betting in disguise what changes could be on the horizon well, Maggie, I think we're going to see Congress look at the issue of sports gambling and daily fantasy sports at some point in the near future. We know that Congressman Pallone from New Jersey has called for hearings on this topic. We also know that under federal law in 1992, Congress passed and, and then President Bush signed a ban on sports betting other than in four states, including Nevada. And then 14 years later, President Bush's son, the second President Bush, signed a law that created an exemption for fantasy sports. But at that time, Maggie, daily fantasy sports weren't commercial back in 2006. The industry has really changed. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see Congress look at this and say, you know, why do we ban sports betting, but we allow fantasy sports when both involve something of a bet, whether you call it a bet or an entry fee, mechanically, it's a very similar instrument. Right, but we hear all the time people who support the daily fantasy uh, sports, they say this is games of skill, not games of chance. Michael, legally, how fine of a line is that? Well, I, I, I think it is a game of skill. And for that reason, I think daily fantasy sports are lawful under federal law. I think they meet the definition of that two, 2006 exemption. Let's face it, if you're good at daily fantasy sports, you probably spend a lot of time looking at data. You look for inefficiencies. You do your homework, although I think the same arguments could be made of really good sports bettors, where they're doing similar things. If you're betting on games this Sunday, and you shouldn't, but if you are, unless you're in one of those states, you know, you're probably doing research. You're not just going with your gut. This isn't a scratch ticket. So uh, I, I think Congress needs to revisit this and say either we allow both or we regulate both in a way that makes sense for consumers. Andrew, what about the consumer? For people who are playing daily fantasy sports, should they feel like there's a reason to be worried? Are they getting ripped off? Well, I mean, you don't want that to feel that way. The whole, the whole thing is built on the idea of fairness, right? And if they don't have that, uh, you, you know, as a consumer, you're a little bit concerned. So, so long as they say, okay, this was an aberration, this was not the usual uh, way of operation, I think consumers are going to be fine with it. Okay, so people shouldn't believe that because an employee for DraftKings turned $25 into $350,000, that somehow they got ripped off. I think they're going to think, I want to be the guy who turns $25 <laughs> well, we into... Right. Yeah, right. He's made it his life uh, work. <laughs>